a special meeting. It is Wednesday, September the 29th, 2021 at 4 p.m. This meeting is being held via teleconference. Um, in order to prevent and mitigate the effects of COVID-19 pandemic and limit potential spread within the city of Morro Bay in accordance with executive order number N08-21, the city will spread, will not make, excuse me, available a physical location from which members of the public may observe the meeting and offer public comment. However, remote public participation is allowed and we will be displaying that information on how you can access this meeting on the screen at the appropriate time that we um, offer up um, public comment. I'll ask the clerk if you, you can establish a quorum, please, Ms. Swanson. Yes, of course, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Council Member Addis? Here. Council Member Barton? Here. Council Member Ford? Here. Council Member Heller? Here. And Mayor Heading? Present. So we do have a quorum. I'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. Um, this evening or this afternoon, I should say, um, we are um, entertaining a special meeting to get a report from staff on our major goals and the accomplishments during the last couple of years with regard to those goals. That of course was part of our packet this evening. Um, we will be receiving the staff report first and then council, if you have any uh, clarifying questions just about what was presented. I'll open it up for that, not necessarily the beginning of the goal discussion, but just uh, any clarifying um, questions you might have for Mr. Collins or the staff with regard to their presentation. And then I'm going to go ahead and open up a public comment after council questions, allow the public to weigh in, and uh, then I will turn it back over to um, our esteemed facilitator, who Mr. Collins will introduce and will um, engage um, in a lively discussion on um, the future of our city. This is a this is a special time. We have been fortunate enough to receive multiple inputs to date from our community. I want to thank our advisory committees and um, our planning commission for their input. It's contained in the staff report, but I'm calling it out because um, those groups took significant time to consider our existing goals and examine the future of Morro Bay from their perspective and provided input. And I, I very much, and I know council does, value the input from our advisory boards, uh, boards. And the summary of that information obviously is contained again in the staff report. In addition to that, our Chamber of Commerce um, did a great independent job representing the business community of evaluating our existing goals, commenting on those, and then also um, from the business perspective, um, engaged in a process of evaluating um, what they see as future needs for the city. And so I wanna just thank the chamber um, in advance for all of the work that they did. Um, thank uh, Ms. Crawford, their chief executive officer, their um, committees that worked on this. Um, and I always appreciate their uh, very succinct and comprehensive write-up that they present to the council. So my thanks to the chamber from council for that. In addition, we have um, uh, used something called Polco, uh, P-O-L-C-O, to uh, allow the public to give input to the city in a number of different areas, but especially with goals. Um, a, a number of surveys have been done. We have received um, multiple uh, inputs from the community that's included in your summary as well and i just want to thank our community members that engaged and responded um, to some of the issues that are there and offered up uh, their comments um, and, and then lastly um, we've had a number of different um, uh, meetings where we've had public comment um, on goals in the past. Um, we haven't done a major review in over two years. We were paused because of COVID-19, as you recall, and um, held off in anticipation that we might be able to gather live to have our goal session. But unfortunately, because of the continued 
um, presence of the pandemic, um, we felt that we needed to move forward with this process and um, go ahead um, and do it remotely, thusly our special meeting this evening, which again is another opportunity for our community to weigh in. This isn't the final or the last meeting on goals. Um, this is part of the process um, and um, will be uh, further uh, delineated and uh, further articulated by staff. Um, this evening, we hope to attain more or less what I'll call, and our facilitator will say it much better than I, but um, more or less the high level areas that the city um, needs to address, um, what I'll call broad categories or um, broad um, areas that goals should be articulated in. And then uh, staff will come back and and um, bring to us objectives. So tonight isn't about writing a bunch of objectives um, and um, details with regard to the plan itself, but really trying to land um, with uh, four or five or so major areas where the city needs to focus in on over the next two years. Then we'll come back again, have public comment, look for public input. Um, from our community on um, those areas and specifically some objectives that will be uh, delivered to us from staff. So that's, that's the process for this evening. That's where we've come from. We do this um, every two years. Um, we, we look at um, goals um, in a major way and every year, of course, we get reports. You do have a report in your packet um, from staff on the um, goals for 2019 2020 and the actions associated with those. Uh, we always um, um, develop an action plan that has measurable objectives with expected outcomes. And that report also is in the packet tonight. And I just wanna thank council and staff for the tremendous amount of work that has been achieved over this last period of time. If you really look at the content of that, um, Everybody's been working hard and much has been accomplished over the last couple of years when we last set goals in the city. And for that, I'm proud of our staff, um, proud of the leadership um, in our community. Uh, but most of all, I'm proud of um, our community for engaging, um, for helping us um, set direction and for guiding us. Um, and we appreciate that greatly. The way I, I um, speak about the city, it's, it's not my asset, it's the city's asset. It belongs to the people. And thusly, the direction that's provided is not the culmination of five people um, setting the direction for the city, but the collective voice of our community members representing the diversity of our community is so critically important to setting um, the future of this city. And, and I just want to say again, and I, I know our council is very much aware of this, that um, this is your asset folks. This is your city and your input is greatly valued and will be um, um, considered uh, significantly as we set direction as policymakers. And, and I'm proud of our council uh, for how they've engaged in the past. Again, proud of our staff for the work that they do to implement our plan and looking forward to a lively discussion with a facilitator tonight so that the mayor doesn't have to do all the work um, but I get to rest after um, all this stuff and actually participate. So um, Summer, um, you'll be introduced a little later, but we're glad to have you here. Um, and uh, Mr. Collins will introduce you and, and give a little history of, of your work and what you do, but thank you for joining us this evening. So with that long-winded introduction, I'm gonna turn it over to our city manager, Mr. Collins. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mayor, Council Members, uh, staff here, and community members, and Summer, of course. Um, so we're kicking off the City Goals Workshop, and thank you for that introduction, Mayor. I'm gonna share my screen for a brief PowerPoint presentation. I think I'll do this correctly this time. All right. Can everybody see that okay? Yes, Scott. Very good. All right. So jumping right in. So just briefly, gonna give an update on the city goals, the current goals and action items, action items being the things that help achieve the goals. Uh, talk about the process to date for revising our goals. Um, the input we've received on both online and from our advisory boards and business boards, take public comment, 
have the facilitated discussion and then talk about next steps for the goals. Um, as it stands cur currently, we have four uh, permanent goals, if you will, and one temporary goal for COVID. Um, not, don't need to read the screen for you. You can see them. Um, I think we're all well accustomed to those now. We've been working with these for about the last three, three plus years. Um, we have 26 corresponding quote unquote action items, which again are those that those discrete actions that we can take to help achieve the goals. Um, not going to go through all of these, but these are the action items we've completed that were identified uh, back in 2018-19 timeframe. Um, you know, a lot, a lot focused on our uh, fiscal health, uh, but also some policy areas as well. Um, these are the action items that we've made really good progress in, but still have a little bit more work to do. And again, runs the gamut from planning into more of the um, some of the projects that we're working on as well as some financial issues. And then last, we have some items that still require um, significant more time before we'd be able to, to complete those. So that rounds out those 26 action items that council approved as far as the work plan a couple of years ago. Um, as far as the goals process is concerned, uh, as the mayor mentioned, we typically start the goals process right after an election. So that would normally be in the January timeframe, um, but we ran into the COVID issue. So we've delayed that up uh, till the mid-year. Um, we ran a survey through the summer. Um, the council had an update on the goals in late August, and then we have this facilitated workshop today. Um, we will uh, bring forward the outcome of this discussion as well as the objectives and out action items for council's consideration later in October, early November. And then uh, we um, try to do our best to provide quarterly updates throughout the year once those goals are established. Um, the community survey results, uh, you know, we asked about four or five questions. Again, all that information is in the attached um, staff report. Uh, but typically, you know, generally speaking, the community um, appreciates and is satisfied with our quality of life here in Morro Bay. Uh, they love the small town environment that's offered here, as well as the the, the nature that comes with the, this very unique setting that we have here. And they feel it's very important to preserve what we have, and not let it be lost. Um, in terms of the issues that are most uh, pressing for community members. Um, financial economic sustainability continues to rise to the top. Um, some public safety issues, maintaining cleanliness and uh, making improvements in our city infrastructure. Um, in addition to those issues, they felt we need to maybe ramp up our efforts and how we manage tourism, uh, the impacts of tourism and protect the environment and complete the water reclamation facility project. The city advisory boards all weighed in, and here's a, a very succinct um, summary of, of their major recommendations. Uh, planning commission, you know, looking at historic preservation, tree program, climate action plan, uh, looking at finance and business improvement districts and implementing our housing element. Harbor is more focused on revenues, making sure the zoning code um, makes sense for the lease sites there parking, infrastructure, Market Street Plaza, and offshore wind. Public Works is focused more on resiliency, uh, cleanliness, and, and improving our infrastructure. Uh, the Citizen Finance Advisory Committee uh, wants us to focus on impact fees, you know, redoing the cost allocation plan, you know, uh, connecting with Public Works on infrastructure funding, and evaluating our pension and other uh, liabilities. And Rec, Rec, Rec and Park said keep on the current course. Um, as was mentioned by the mayor, uh, two of our business boards, the Tourism Business Improvement District and Chamber of Commerce weighed in. Um, TBID uh, you know, said keep focus on cleanliness and beautification and Chamber of Commerce had a pretty comprehensive uh, letter that was submitted that looked at four areas of sanitation or beautification, affordable housing, um, traffic circulation and, and infrastructure improvements. So I'll stop here to see if there's any council questions about that um, information. Again, this basically the same information was provided at the end of August. And um, at that time we'd received 120 responses on Polco. And I think we ended up at about 180. So we saw a pretty good increase in the number of um, responses. It really didn't move the numbers much from August. Great, uh, thank you, Scott. Appreciate the overview.
Um, go ahead and ask uh, council members if um, you have any clarifying questions on Scott's information that he presented. Uh, council member Heller, I see your hand, sir. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you, Mayor. Just a quick question. I am assuming that the goal setting here will carry us through the rest of this calendar year and through the end of calendar year 2022. Am I correct? That is correct, Councilmember Heller. That was probably the last slide after um, Summer does her thing. But yeah, uh, usually how it works, it would be the rem remainder of this year, all of next year. And of course, there's an election in 2022, new council seated. It's going to take several months for, for them to focus on goals. So it sort of carries into that new term as well for a few months. But yeah, but mostly it's focused on this year and next year. So we're looking at uh, setting goals for about 14 months. Yeah, more okay. or less. Yeah. Yeah, before the next, um, um, you know, iteration of um, review. Absolutely. Right. Thank Good. you. You bet. Any other council member questions um, on the information that uh, Scott presented? <laughs> Seeing no hands, uh, I'll just make one comment. I think that's important and remind you that you know um, the overall goals for the city in, inform both the operating and capital budget. So um, uh, always keep in mind um, that there's um, funding required for uh, major initiatives and goals, and and um, um, the right way to think about it is that the the major goal areas and objectives um, inform the development of the operation on capital budget for each year. So just that clarification. Okay, seeing no further questions, I will oops, go ahead and open up public comment. Um, this is public comment for the special meeting agenda items only this evening. This is not general public comment. We're looking for public comment um, on our goals and objectives. And I'm going to go ahead and open up public comment. Of course, uh, the information on how to access a public comment is on the screen. You can do it by phone, as you see, and or um, by clicking on or entering in the link that's shown on the screen. And um, uh, you'll have three minutes for public comment. And I will ask um, Highland, go ahead and uh, um, open up public comment. And do we have any members of the public that wish to speak, sir? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. There are no raised hands in the queue. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. We have one raised hand from Erica Crawford. Great. Welcome, Erica. Good afternoon, Honorable Mayor and Council. I don't have any prepared remarks this evening or this afternoon, uh, but I did just want to express how kind of heartened I am by the working group that's assembled. I think you got some agenda correspondence from Christine Johnson with Pacific Wildlife Care. We've been doing some good work with some of your city staffers, uh, members of the business community, to take sort of a, a, a good look from multiple perspectives on a very complex issue that is sort of uh, food waste and um, animal, you know, behavior and human behavior. Uh, so I just, I wanted you to know that, that that's a really great positive development and a good collaboration that's forming in your community. Thank you. Thank you, Erica. And um, I did receive that email and I think council did as well and had the opportunity to review it. And we thank you for mentioning that tonight. Helen, uh, do we have any other public comments, sir? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We do not. Okay. I will go ahead then and I will close public comment, bring it back here for our facilitated workshop and ask Mr. Collins to introduce um, our uh, facilitator this evening. Thanks, Scott. Yes, and before I do that, I wanted to make mention of one important thing. I got through my presentation very quickly and forgot a very important point. I know, in Mayor, and I know the council members have all done this already, but I just wanted to thank staff for their incredible work um, in, in getting those action items done those checked off the list which were not easy especially in uh COVID-19 pandemic era um and also wanted to note that you know these goals are really sort of forward thinking and, and innovative and looking into the future uh, what's not necessarily captured in them is the day-to-day -day work of your your city employees like particularly like public safety code enforcement planning uh, water and sewer you know all the all the services that our community relies upon 
aren't necessarily captured there. And I, and I think that's a good thing that we, we sort of have that booked. We, we know we can rely upon those services because city council have, has invested in, that, in those services and it's what our community depends upon. And the community has come forward with Measure Q and Measure E in the past to continue to fund those services. So I don't want that to get lost in this. Um, and we appreciate all the work of every single employee. And again, we're only able to look into the future because we have um, the dependable services um, nailed down by our staff. So just wanted to just make sure that was noted in case our employees are listening. And then also um, very excited to introduce, um, let me share my screen again. Uh, let's see here, I can move it forward. Um, Summer, and I, I'm sorry, you know what? I don't know if I actually can pronounce your name correctly. Is it, is it uh, Curly? Curly, you got it. All right, I was close. All right, very good. Um, so Summer is the CEO for the Center for Organization Effectiveness. I always want to say organizational. So organization effectiveness. For the last 10 years, the CEO of the Center, every day Summer engages with executive leadership and elected officials throughout the state of California on high-stake projects and strategic planning and has served uh, both the city of San Luis Obispo and Paso and probably other cities in this uh, county. Uh, she has a pulse on current dynamics in the state as well as local government uh, and navigating um, what is required to get things done. Um, tying complex big picture elements to the realities of day-to-day -day operations is Summer's favorite playground. Uh, she has a PhD and master's degree in or industrial and organizational psychology from the California School of Professional Psychology and a Bachelor of Science in Psychology from Santa Clara University. Um, Summer completed a fellowship at the UCSF Change Agent Program, and she is also the 2018 Woman to Watch Award recipient from the San Diego Women of Influence Awards. Um, and I know she has spoken to each of the council members. Um, she came highly uh, recommended by cities that we look up to, and I'm, I'm so grateful that she's able to help facilitate this important discussion today. So with that, I will turn it over to you, Summer. And of course, I will manage the slides. So just tell me when you'd like me to advance those if you don't mind. And Summer, let me just on behalf of the council, um, welcome you. Um, we're um, uh, blessed to have you with your background um, and all of the work that you've done and excited about um, what's going to happen this evening. And thank you for spending the time with each of us that you did. I wanted to make sure the public knew that independently member of the council um, uh, interacted with Summer to um, kind of talk through not only process, but to give inputs on the city. And um, um, we appreciate that. Just want to say um, welcome. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, you all are setting the bar very high. So uh, I hope I can meet that here this evening. Um, I realize this is a really different goal setting workshop in the sense that we aren't physically all together. And I wish I was sitting there in Morro Bay with you all um, and having this conversation. But what is consistent is that it will be an engaging and a highly interactive um, opportunity for you all to share your input and thoughts and to make sense of all of the community input that um, you've received thus far. I really, as, as um, City Manager Collins was mentioning, I've done quite a lot of this work and different cities and counties do it different ways. Um, and I really applaud the amount of uh, rigor that has gone into evaluating your goals, setting goals in the first place, but evaluating those goals and then staff really taking the time to identify short-term and long-term actions that can be taken and knowing that sometimes things change, right? If we've all learned anything over the last 18 months, it's that, and that um, you have to shift and pivot and figure out what you can actually accomplish in a time frame. And so today, I hope it really is a continued dialogue of where you've been as a city and for this point in time, really what, what the next steps are um, to set up a great future for Morro Bay. Um, I do want, because I know you all have been um, running, having busy days, doing things other than being council members um, and sitting in this meeting. And so I'd love for you to just um, help you transition a little bit and get your mindset into our conversation today. 
by reflecting for a minute, and you don't need to share this with the group um, today, so this is really your personal reflection for a minute, but get your mind around, reflect on a, on a time that you really have had your most pride-filled moment. Being a council member at Morro Bay, being the mayor at Morro Bay, um, council member Ford as a brand new council member being maybe being on the planning commission, right? Your other roles that you've played. What's really your most pride filled moment in being a leader for Morro Bay? And hopefully that comes to you quickly. For some of you, that might be something that just happened in the last week. For others, that might've been something that happened years ago. But I want you to think about what was that project? Who were you working with? How did that feel? And my goal here for us today is that we create more of that. We create a pathway today for more of that to happen for Morrow Bay. It'll probably be different projects. It might be different players at the table to execute on those projects, but that it's that kind of um, pride that you all experience because of what you set forth today and the conversations that you have today as a group. So the goal, um, both the city manager and the mayor um, highlighted and, and um, City Manager Collins, you can go to the second, the next slide here. Really, our goal here today is to is to provide clear direction to city staff. So, we're really our goal is not to get into the weeds and the wordsmithing of specific full statements or specific measurements of of what we're going to accomplish. Um, and as uh, Council Member Heller had mentioned, the timeline for these goals is really intended to be the balance or the remainder of 2021 and then into calendar year or the entirety of calendar year 2022. Uh, that's really our focus here. So it's a little bit, it's less than a full two years, certainly, um, for obvious reasons that we already discussed. And so really our goal is to say in that time frame, what are these key areas that the city staff needs to be focusing attention on and then the city staff will take that direction and identify what are those short-term um, objectives or initiatives or action items that need to take place and what are maybe some of the longer-term ones. Certainly, depending on what you land on as being these key goal theme focus areas um, that some of them may be very quite long-term to actually affect change on. And so they may extend and be on your goal list for multi-years, right? They may go on and on and on. You may choose to carry over some of the things that are currently on your goal list. Um, but what we really want to walk out of here this evening with is clear direction on those four, five, six, three, some manageable amount of um, theme areas, goals for the city staff to focus on, and then some, some clear direction on within that, what does that mean, right? So within, I'll use as an example, public infrastructure is something that's been on the goal list in the past. I have a feeling it will likely end up on the one this evening um, based on the input and my pre-conversations with the council members. And we want to clarify for the staff, what within public infrastructure do we really want that focus to be over the next 14 plus months? So that's really our intention this evening. Um, City Manager Collins, if you can go to the next slide. I just wanted to echo a little bit about what um, was just being mentioned about the, the larger purpose of the City of Morro Bay, which is up here on the screen here, to provide essential public services and infrastructure to maintain a safe, clean, and healthy place for residents and visitors to live, work, and play. There are tons of city services that often don't make it onto a goal list because you are already doing that work so proficiently. And that does not mean if it doesn't make it onto a goal list that it's not critical work, essential work that needs to continue to happen, that it serves and meets the purpose of the city, but that what we often wanna put into a goal list are primary focus areas or where we need to put additional resources or shift resources in order to really accomplish those goals. So that's, that's really typically the focus, although this council, you obviously can choose what you'd like to put onto the, um, as goal themes, but that is often why we won't see regular city services on a, um, on a goal list. So just to keep that in mind. Um, I did wanna remind, um, the mayor had shared a bit that I had the opportunity to do one-on-one -on -one meetings with each of the council members. And really the intention for that um, as pre-work for the session here this evening 
is to take the community input. We do, we do that after the council has had the opportunity to review um, the results from Polco, several meetings obviously with public comment, as well as many of the um, bodies of feedback that come in from the commissions and the advisory boards. And for me to then have an opportunity to ask them what they see as being really top priorities, key areas we need to focus attention on based upon all of that input. And the purpose for doing that is to see in advance of this evening, what are really, where is there really clear alignment and where might there be some um, misalignment that we need to have more dialogue on. That helps me as a facilitator plan the sessions. We can have a really meaningful conversation. And what came from those conversations that there really is quite a lot of alignment around four critical areas. Um, some of them are already on the goal, um, the current goals. Um, some of some of it is new, but the focus within those, I think it's fair to say there's a bit of a nuanced shift because the city has done a great job of accomplishing many of the objectives within the current goals, that the shift is, uh, there is a shift that's needed to occur within some of the um, this next year's goal areas. So City Manager Collins, if you don't mind advancing the slide and we'll put up there, these are the four areas and you can just advance it to show, there we go. To, these are the four areas where there really was alignment in my conversations with uh, the council members and in looking at the various um, opportunities for input from the community that we received, that really around public infrastructure being a, a huge component, which is obviously a continuation on what um, we've had in the current goals. The second one around, and these are not necessarily in any particular order, um, but the second one listed here, fiscal sustainability and economic vitality. So you'll notice a slight change in some wording there. These are not set in stone wording wise, by all means, There's these are open for uh, discussion, of course. Um, but I think within that fiscal sustainability and economic vitality, we can have some really good conversation about what that means to provide city staff some direction on that. The third area that was identified is around housing um, and really making sure that housing is um, accessible and that you have enough of it in um, the city of Morro Bay. And then the fourth area, which really is, an, is new to the list, is around climate action. And this was identified um, by various uh, areas within the community input, uh, as well as by the council members as being an area that certainly we won't be able to fix within the next 14 months, but that we should be taking steps in that direction. And so what are the local steps that can be taken um, to affect uh, and to take climate action? So those were really the four areas. What I would like to recommend is um, in just a few minutes, I have, I have one other context setting element I'd like to set before we dive into discussion. Um, but what I'd, what I'd like to ask is that we will walk through each of these four one at a time. And that as we do that, we have an opportunity to hear from each of the council members um, as we talk about public infrastructure for you to be able to highlight um, what that really, what does success in that area look like in your mind? You know, what is at this point in time for the city of Morro Bay, what do we really need to be taking steps around um, to meet this moment? So it may not just be public infrastructure in general, the city will continue to do the essential services it provides, but what about public infrastructure in this moment? And so as an example, some of what, um, I've been reading from the community input and certainly from our one-on-ones work around sanitation, cleanliness, um, tourism management seems to be elements within this moment of, in time for the city of Morro Bay that need to take a front seat when we talk about public infrastructure. What I will be doing as we have that conversation, just so you have a sense of the process flow, um, I won't share my screen with the notes that I'm taking. I'll keep this so that you can see one another as you're speaking. Um, but I'll be taking notes on what are kind of the, what are the focuses within that goal area? And then if you've identified any short or long-term action areas, I will highlight those, I'll note those so that we really have a document we can share with city staff uh, for them to flesh out further with clear objectives, action items, timelines, whatnot. Once we get through all of these four, um, 
if there are additional pieces that any of the, the city council members feel were not identified in one of these four. So there might be items that you really wanted to highlight and didn't fit in to any of these four areas. And we may have a fifth area that you wanna highlight. Or for example, if you wanted to separate out fiscal sustainability and economic vitality, um, that at that point we would do that at the end of the session and figure out if there's potentially a fifth goal area that needs to be added to the list. Any questions about the process before I, I highlight one more context setting piece and then we'll dive into the dialogue. Any questions from the council on the process? Nope. Okay. So city manager Collins, if you could advance the next slide. I wanted to share this model um, and in a minute I'll share I'll share the um, the new partnership wheel as well. If you've not seen this model, I think it's a really helpful um, wheel to describe uh, often how we approach um, inappropriately big problems or issues within our city that cities that need to be addressed. And this was created by Ray Pichette, who is a well-respected city manager. Um, and then it was cited, has been cited actually several times, but the first place I read it was, was from Ed Everett, who's also a well-respected city manager. And he was writing an article about how to do fantastic community building, which the city of Morrow Bay has already been doing quite a lot of that. And this model that they shared is, is that often we make the mistake of putting local government in the middle of any kind of issue that we need to be solving. And that local government is then seen as the fixers of any issue that is present in a city. And all of these circles around the local government are then people who are more like customers of um, the city services or of the solutions that come from city staff. And if you advance to the next slide, really where we wanna be in is that we put the topic or the issue in the center of that circle. And you notice that local government moved to one of those other circles on the outside to say, those are really, the local government is a convening source to bring all the different stakeholders to the table to solve what may be in instances pretty gnarly issues and that the city can't solve those or resolve those in and of itself as an entity, that it really requires the full community to support that. So I wanted to highlight that because I think often when we get into conversation about goals, um, it can be easy for a city council and then for city staff to feel that they own the entirety of fixing something. And the reality is most of the things that we're talking about cannot be fixed solely by one organization. They are, you take climate action as an example, right? It is a much broader issue um, that needs the full community's support to accomplish. I think you have that alive and well in this community from how much community input you've received and the alignment from the commissions and the advisory boards and the chamber and, and the amount of input that you've received from the community. Uh, but I do want to frame that and I might bring you back to this at times that we, we may be saying, hey, the step, one of the steps we want to see for the city is really convening of these other groups in this resolution or in approaching an, an issue. Um, as opposed to the city alone needing to, or even being able to resolve such a thing. So I think we can stop sharing at this point, the screen. And I will, um, just to give you a preview of what I will be um, tracking, at this point, you're gonna see that it's blank, so it will not look very impressive. But as we talk, um, or as you talk, I will be filling in this table, essentially. So I've highlighted here our purpose as a city, which was previously on that slide, um, and that what we'll be doing is if, if these are the four goal themes, I'll be asking you one at, a, one at a time, we'll go through these. I'll be putting in some notes here on the focus within that goal theme, and then identifying if there are any potential short-term or long-term action items that are highlighted. That's really the, the, the role of the city staff to flesh this out further, but certainly I like to take notes on that because often there's fantastic ideas that come um, that we can note and put in here. Certainly if we then, once we get to the end of this, if we wanna add a fifth or sixth goal or whatnot goal theme, we can do that. This is not set in stone by any means, but this is the template that I'll be 
completing as we are um, talking. So if we start with public infrastructure, and I will um, get this started and then welcome um, any of the mayor, the council members to share their thoughts. In this public infrastructure space, much of what I think we're reading in the community input, as well as in the one-on-ones I had with many of you, um, is really focusing in on some of the um, sanitation and cleanliness infrastructure related to much of, of the tourism that is present in very alive in um, Morro Bay. So thoughts as you think about public infrastructure, what you really see as being success, uh, what would a great outcome over the course of the next 14 to 16 months look like if Morro Bay was to address um, some of the public infrastructure dynamics at this moment in time? So who would like to get us started? All right, Council Member Addis. Thank you, Summer, and I want to um, also say thank you for being able to meet one-on-one -on -one with you. I found that very valuable, and say thank you to staff as well. I know a lot of hard work goes into this, and I absolutely agree that if we weren't in a good space already, we wouldn't be able to think bigger about the future. But when I think about public infrastructure and public spaces and success, um, it would be having a plan and being able to address our capital project needs as well as our water security. We already have the one water plan and I would very much like to see us um, finish that out but also have funding opportunities for other capital projects that we might need. I'm going to put traffic circulation under this um, umbrella of infrastructure even though some might say it's not really infrastructure. But especially along the Embarcadero, getting into and leaving Morro Bay should be easy when there's a holiday like the boat parade or the 4th of July or just beautiful weather down at the Rock. I envision a Morro Bay that's easily accessible but also easy to leave when it's time to go home. Uh, and then finally, having a clean city that also um, is sensitive to animals and animal habitat. I want to appreciate the chamber who has started a working group um, that is addressing this issue. And I and I absolutely agree that the topic is at the center and the city is one of our partners. But I see a clean Embarcadero and a clean city that also attends to the health and well-being of our wildlife population, which is one of the reasons people come here. And that's it for me on this one. Thank you. I appreciate that. Others that want to echo and or add to what Councilmember Addison. said. Yes, Councilmember Heller. Yes, thank you, Summer. Thank you so much for working with us on this. I'm really looking forward to this. And the time you spent with us individually was extremely productive and just really happy to have you here. Uh, in looking at all this information from the advisory committees, uh, it's just, it's remarkable how many people are involved in, in making this city better and better all the time. Uh, in this particular category, what I see over and over again, when I look at public works comments, when I look at the chamber's comments, I see cleanliness and sanitation uh, as the key issue. And it's not only a, a health and safety issue, but it's, a, it's an economic issue. And I consider it an emergency, frankly. We've been overwhelmed with tourists in the last 18 months or so. We've struggled to manage uh, our trash, which we have done a good job with, but we're still not there. Um, we've had to deal with traffic, which uh, Council Member Addis mentioned, but that, which I think is important. But keeping a city clean sends a huge message. And I think from a health and safety standpoint, uh, we should focus on that for the next 12 months. By that, I mean the Embarcadero and Morro Bay Boulevard, the primary business districts, be cleaned up. From a health and safety standpoint, the crosswalks need to be painted. The stripes down the middle of the streets need to be painted. We have a serious traffic issue with the overwhelming numbers of tourists who here are here who roll through stop signs. We had a pedestrian death this year. We, we don't have stop signs where we need them. So when I talk about the next 12 months, that's what I'm looking at in terms of public infrastructure. It's a combination of health and safety. 
uh, and just cleanliness and beautification, which is mentioned by a number of the advisory groups, and I fully support that. That is my statement. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Heller. Councilmember Barton. You're on mute, Council. I know. I, I was, oh, there you go. Just, just fixed it. Okay. <clears throat> I want to um, uh, kind of echo uh, Councilmember um, Addis and uh, Councilmember Heller um, on the cleanliness part of it. Um, I think we're, we're all noticing that, the, the birds in particular. And I was certainly glad to um, get the, the um, email from Christine today about the group that is working together on that. Um, the, also the the safety in downtown um, I often I volunteer with a with Morro Bay and Bloom and so that puts me often standing at the corner of Napa and Morro Bay Boulevard and yes there are a lot of people who roll through that stop sign and considering the, the numbers of, uh, of visitors we have who may or may not be looking for a car to do exactly that um, it's it can be um, kind of challenging to keep everybody safe um, and I agree with the the uh, better painted crosswalks, perhaps um, the larger, more visible stop signs, that sort of thing. So the, the safety issues are, are definitely um, uh, in need of attention. Um, and then for um, maintenance of, of uh, infrastructure, um, I'm thinking of the harbor um, also is an, an area much in need of attention. So those, those are the ones I wanted to highlight. Okay. Thank you, Councilmember Barton. Can you comment more just the maintenance in the harbor area, just so I can get an example of that? Um, it is a topic that comes up often that the um, the harbor parts of the harbor are, are quite old <clears throat> and are needing attention. The underpinnings, the pilings, um, that that sort of thing is is what I was referring to. Thank you. Thank you. I've noted it. Okay, council member Ford. All right. Well, the benefit of going last on this topic, well, almost last, Mayor Heading hasn't gone yet, um, is that I really, <laughs> that I, um, I want to echo what all three council members have said so far. I'm in agreement 100% with everything. Um, and I would say, you know, that that could be worked on immediately. I think all of these issues are immediate issues that could be addressed. Um, if I'm thinking long-term infrastructure, I don't know if we're addressing short-term and long-term on this specific goal, but um, if we're going to go long-term, I know that um, broadband, things like that, I know that we haven't been able to really um, address that uh, so far when I was looking through all of the goals that have been met or have are on their way to being met or haven't been met yet um, that that one was you know that really hasn't been met and um, looking you know forward in the future for um, bringing business into our city and developing our um, our business uh, the business you know in enticing businesses to come here so we could be more economically sustainable. I think that that is important. So um, is it immediate? Not necessarily, but um, since I already agree with everything else that's already said, um, that's something I think that would be great um, to, to focus in the long term. Great. Fantastic. I did highlight, um, I put that bringing in broadband as a potential long-term action. So it is highlighted on there. Um, and some of these we may want to acknowledge or put into um, specificity of, of timing. I heard Councilmember Heller, I did note um, the safety piece being a primary concern and earlier rather than later. All right, was that it, Councilmember Ford, on this one? That is all. Thank you so much, Summer. I appreciate your guidance and um you know, this, it's been a wonderful, wonderful experience so far. So thank you so much. And thank you to the city for all of your hard work. Thank you. All right, Mayor Heading. So I get to make the comment going last is makes it easier. So uh, Council Member Ford, thank you for making my statement now that I'm going last. Um, ditto um, across the board. Thank you, Council Members. 
um, for hitting the nail on the head. I had a couple of um, additional items perhaps in the short term to look at. And I think I heard circulation. I just want to clarify that. But for me, circulation issues fit here. And if I didn't hear it, I just wanted to make sure that that was captured. Um, I, I heard about you know uh, tourism impacts and, and being able to get out of the city in a timely fashion. But there are a number of other circulation issues, I think, that need to be looked at and addressed. Um, I also had a storm water uh, management, um, and I'm not talking about fixing all of our storm drains right now, but in terms of uh, that infrastructure, there is no capital plan for that and no funding mechanism. So I, I don't know what other um, uh, category to put it under, but I do think we need to begin to address a plan there, specifically with regard to what um, uh, Council Member Barton was talking about on the harbor. Um, and I, it may come up under financial uh, sustainability, economic vitality, but we need a major capital plan for capital improvement on public spaces along um, uh, the harbor itself. And um, sidewalks are a public safety issue. Um, circulation on the Embarcadero is a major public safety issue, in my opinion, um, and, and also um, um, addressing those issues um, via uh, um, a direct uh, funding plan, I think, is extremely important. Um, I'll add to that the Harbor Walk um, and, and completing that public space and, and, and getting that um, um, going and continuing to make that uh, something that's attractive. And lastly, I will add uh, parks. We haven't really looked at our parks in the city for a long time. Um, I, I'm thinking of, of Franklin Riley Park specifically that we're about to unveil, but I do also think that it would be good to begin to look at how we might be able to improve these public spaces for our community members. Um, so I think it'd be good to, to look at that. And those are just my additions to all the great other comments that were made. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. So I'm going to any other comments from any of the council members around public infrastructure? Elements you'd like to see the city really addressing over the course of the next 14 plus months. Okay, then I'm going to share my screen on this just so you can you can read this as we go while it's fresh in your mind um, to make sure I've captured the items. Certainly, these can be some of these can be clumped together and um, may get reordered by staff to reprioritize. Uh, but having a plan and address upcoming capital needs, specifically Harbor Capital Plan, to continue to address water security, traffic circulation, specifically in the Embarcadero. A clean city being to address the cleanliness and sanitation issues that's also sensitive to the ecosystem, animals, et cetera. Safety, specifically the Embarcadero and Morro Bay Boulevard, crosswalk stripes, painted stop signs, and that, that really be a focus over the next 12 months. Maintenance in the harbor area, underpinnings and pilings. That's an example that that might you know come up here connected in some way. And then stormwater management that we really need to not that that needs to be addressed immediately, but a um, creation of a capital plan or funding mechanism to prepare that plan, to complete the Harbor Walk public space, and then to look at parks and how to improve those public space spaces for the community. And then here I put Council Member Ford, the bringing in broadband, and that it seems that there may be a connection into kind of business development, economic vitality, potentially there as well. Any, any edits or corrections? you would make to any of these? Okay, great. City Manager Collins, certainly if there's anything in here that you'd wanna clarify for staff or ask for clarification on, please um, chime in as we go. All right, so let's move on to area number two around what I've termed fiscal sustainability and economic vitality. Certainly that is up for discussion if you prefer a different term, but it seemed to encompass um, many of the different elements I was hearing in this area. And I would just, to get it started, would say that a lot of what I was hearing is, hey, we've, we've fared pretty well coming out of the pandemic. Uh, the city has done a lot in the last several years to really um, create good infrastructure, to have good processes, 
um, for how we really address our budget, look at the budget, kind of fiscal responsibility elements of it. And that this really is a shift on how do we as a city make sure we are positioning ourselves in the long term to make sure it's a, it, it's economically vital that it feel it's it's oriented towards the future. Um, whether that's with businesses feeling welcome, tourism continuing in a sustainable way, potentially other opportunities. Those are my terms, right? Uh, encompassing much of what I've heard. Um, so let's hear from you on what you would say is really the focus within this whole thing. Mayor Heading, kick us off. Thanks. I um, have a number of things that may fit here, but also uh, cross over into other areas. Um, the first of which is is really addressing and understanding our um, citywide CalPERS liability and developing a robust revenue plan for funding that. We've talked about it um, significantly and no, through no fault of staff um, because of other priority issues. Um, um, we haven't been able to really get a handle on that. And I, I, I just think we're headed for a big surprise in the near future. And if we don't get a handle on this quickly, I think, um, I think that could be problematic. So I'll leave that there. Along with that, um, the other major, uh, to me, um, uh, cost issue that will um, cause issues with sustainability financially has to do with our health care liability. Um, and that um, this year was rather significant. So I also think included with CalPERS that those would be the two major areas I would look at from the expense side to really get a handle on and understand how we're going to better control the rise in premiums and the cost to the organization or the city, um, which has, was tremendous this year. Um, the third would be um, what I would just categorize as um, um, expeditiously completing opportunity um, or catalyst site development. And, you know, there are a number of things, I tried to, to make that broad, but there are a number of things that could fit into that, like um, the completion of Marketplace Plaza as a project. A number of properties are being redeveloped on the Embarcadero, the, the completion of um, the um, Cloisters um, development project, um, the redevelopment of the uh, Bank of America site, uh, so forth and so on. I, I just think I'd categorize it as as completing um, or moving along the catalyst um, opportunity projects to uh, realize those um, as quickly uh, as possible. Um, uh, additionally, with regard to this, um, uh, we must um, address Vistra and the master planning for that. Um, I'm gonna just leave it very broad, um, and that would be to work with Vistra to understand um, um, the current proposed battery project, but also um, the remainder master plan development plan and what that could entail for the city from an economic standpoint. Um, I think that will obviously be um, very significant for the city um, in the future. I would be re remiss if I didn't put just down the term offshore wind, but that's long-term. And so you could put it down in that long, long-term like broadband perhaps category, but I think we have to keep that in front of us um, as a major um, opportunity for economic vitality and um, diversification. Um, one that may sound odd, but uh, I do believe that um, the city needs to be involved in assisting um, uh, businesses, hoteliers, uh, maybe more specifically, but also retail in improving their um, facade and infrastructure through an infrastructure assistance program that may be long-term. Uh, potentially, uh, just as an example, that could be a um, TOT relief program that allows a hotelier to um, improve their property and uh, there's a shared um, opportunity for the city to assist them with that by forgiving TOT partially, not fully, for a period of time. But um, we've got a large number of properties that um, have been um, unimproved for a long period of time. 
both on the retail and hotelier side. And so um, just trying to understand what type of program um, of assistance could be developed, I think could be very helpful to the city and also to uh, further um, private development. And um, um, I'll stop there. I, I have a number of other things, but I'm gonna listen to other folks. So thanks. Thank you. We can circle back too. You bet. That's okay. You bet. All right. Council Member Addis. Thank you. And thank you, Mayor, for um, kicking us off. I, I absolutely am in agreement with everything that was stated. And I would just add a couple things. Um, for me, addressing PERS in healthcare cannot come at the cost of lower wages to employees. So economic vitality would mean that we can do both, that we can pay a competitive wage while also addressing PERS in healthcare. And I say this because we've had retention issues in areas that our public has said are important to them, such as safety services, um, such as keeping our city clean, all of that takes staffing and it takes competitive wages. And so if we want to keep listening to our community, we're gonna to have to address PERS, healthcare and wages, all as one piece of economic vitality. I would add that if we were economically vital, we would fully fund our harbor needs. Um, and we wouldn't struggle with things that Council Member Heller brought up, such as painting crosswalks or putting in stop signs. We would be able to do important uh, safety and infrastructure things immediately as well as in the long term. And it also means being very strategic about increasing revenue through battery storage, through wind, um, looking at parking, looking at opportunity sites, looking at Market Street Plaza, but staying creative about other ways that we can look at revenue generation and really continuing to partner with our chamber and other community partners on how do we do those things. Uh, because as you mentioned, city government doesn't have to do it all. We are one partner in this piece of the puzzle. And so I just want to keep appreciating that statement. I would say, I think that's all of my notes. Great. I'm going to take just a quick pause to make sure I've captured it before I call in the next person. Great. I think I got it. All right. Thank you, Council Member Addis. Other council members, is there anything you'd like to add on this topic of fiscal sustainability and economic vitality? All right. Council Member Ford. Um, I'm in agreement with um, what the mayor and council member Addis just mentioned. Um, I would like to add that there's, um, you know, as far as revenue generation, um, as I believe council member Addis just, you know, talked about how we aren't always necessarily the center of how that can happen. And so maybe it's a, you know, becoming creative and reaching out to our community. Um, to come up with ideas for um, revenue generation, um, because I think that our city, our city government, um, feels responsible for for coming up with all the big ideas, and I think that that's important. We we have a smart crew here, so of course that's possible. But I think it's important to be very specific on that topic um, to invoke you know, to, to invite ideas from our community to participate in, in, in that sort of a, um, in, on that topic specifically. So I think engaging our community is really important when it comes to generating revenue and, um, and coming up with these types of ideas. Also, um, I want to point out another property too, it, to keep in mind, you know, this is more long-term, um, is the current wharf, um, the current wastewater treatment plant, um, eventually that will be vacant. And what does that look like, right? So I think the long-term goal for that would be, we have this waterfront property that's amazing. Um, you know, well, almost waterfront, but there's some dunes in the middle there. But but anyway, this beachfront property, it's amazing. So what does that look like? What could go there? 
but could bring in some, you know, additional revenue to our city. So um, I just wanted to throw that out there, but um, I don't really have anything else to add to this specifically. Uh, um, I think that we can tie in the long-term goal of broadband, obviously, you know, as you mentioned, Summer, to this topic as well, because I think that um, it is necessary in the future to be in the competitive market with new businesses coming in. Um, a lot of other cities are, do, you know, are equipping themselves with this and so we are a small city however we are we're go-getters and we're on the forefront of a lot of things and i think that we could definitely keep that in mind for the future so that's it thank you excellent thank you council member heller yes thank you summer uh i'd like to uh, support what mayor heading said with respect to calpers liability and and health care liabilities those are things that tend to not always get discussed but it is uh kind of the elephant in the room and i appreciate you bringing those up um in terms of fiscal sustainability a lot of it has to do with infrastructure i wasn't quite sure whether to put them under the infrastructure column or fiscal sustainability but i'm very concerned about our financial capacity to finish the water reclamation facility project um, with a reasonable budget which i'd say the budget right now at 145 million dollars um, I am concerned about how we're going to fund the decommissioning and demolition of the existing sewer plant. And I'm very concerned about how we're going to resolve our legal differences with the Cayuca Sanitary District, which is a part owner in the existing plant. Those, uh, those things concern me. I consider those near-term issues primarily, but those concern me uh, greatly. Um, longer term, um, as mentioned before, the Harbor Department, I believe, needs a, a sustainable funding source in order to bring it up to the same level as our other emergency service groups, fire department and police department, which have been supported quite a bit by the passing of Measure E. The Harbor Department is still hanging out there. They have great operational, financial operational needs, as well as capital improvement needs. We need to identify a sustainable source long term for them so that they uh, will be able to survive. Uh, lastly, I think we need to, this is also long term, we need to identify long term infrastructure funding, federal or state money, to repair our streets, which are in a state of continual decline, um, and uh, to implement the One Water Project, which uh, is a combination of sewer and water and stormwater piping, which has been identified throughout the city that needs repair or replacement. We're in the state where we have sewer pipes that are leaking into the ground, stormwater that is unnecessarily getting into the bay. And it's my hope that federal or state funding will be available to uh, handle these capital projects, which have been estimated in the 25 to $30 million range, I believe. Uh, that $30 million range is for streets and then another $30 million for the One Water project. So um, I think we're very fortunate to have gotten uh, relief funds from the federal government to replenish our uh, general fund emergency reserves. Extremely fortunate or we might not even be having this meeting. Uh, and I think that over the last five years, we've made major improvements in the managing of our finances and we're on a very good track to uh, continue those with the staff and the programs and policies that, that we have in place. That is all for me. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Heller. Councilmember Martin. Well, Effie, um, I think that everyone has made wonderful um, contributions to this topic. There's so many ways to look at it. Um, the one thing I thought that maybe fit here, I know you're going to deal with housing on it. I think it's its own standalone issue, but I think it also kind of fits into this same category um, in the, uh, the sense of having housing for people who want to work here. Um, and so uh, I just want to toss that one out too. Great. Okay. All right. Was that it, Councilmember Barton? Yes, I, I agree with all the other the other things that were said. Okay, thank you. Any other items that you'd like to highlight on the goal area of fiscal sustainability and economic vitality? Mayor Heading. Yes, um, um, 
I think it's probably worth adding um, because um, it, it may be longer term, but it's related to my general comment about the development of the Vistra site, and that is um, I, I do believe that the city needs to evaluate an EIFD or an uh, enhanced infrastructure financing district. We could extract revenues um, from taxes on the Vistra property um, from the county that could be mutually beneficial. And so um, um, we've talked a little bit about it before, but I'll leave it at, at explore um, an EIFD with regard to the Vistra development. Okay. Any final comments on this goal area? Okay, then I'm going to share this one. This one's a little bit longer. And I apologize if I, I'm trying to type and listen at the same time. So if I have spelled anything wrong, um, please correct it or in the final document certainly oh, city staff will certainly correct this so i'm um, glad you get to do this it's <laughs> nice to be able to participate <laughs> <laughs> you know what's nice about it when you're not doing this on a paper chart word tells you if you're spelling something wrong so that's kind of nice but um so the first couple here to address citywide calpers liability and robust funding plan and I put an asterisk here and on the next one around address healthcare liability, the rise in premiums and costs to the city. And the asterisk is here to identify what Councilmember Addis had highlighted that those need to be identified or addressed while balancing fair wages for staff to accomplish all of these amazing goals that we're discussing and to continue to do the awesome work that the staff does. Um, third, we had to expeditiously complete the catalyst site development and I listed some of the um, uh, areas that were identified in that. Uh, next was to ad address Vistra, the current proposed battery project and master planning. And we had to assist businesses, hotels, retail to improve facade and infrastructure. And there was mention of maybe a partial TOT relief program, but that really was more of a long-term effort potentially. Um, onto the next page, we have the fund, the harbor, needs fully and really looking to identify a sustainable funding source for those needs, being strategic and in increasing revenue funding or revenue generation, and a comment here about getting creative and reaching out to community for some of those ideas, opportunities that might exist, to partner with community members and organizations to accomplish these goals. I think that likely just goes across everything, but was important to note for staff. Uh, thinking through what we do with the current WRF property since it'll be vacant and what we can do with that land. Finishing the current build on the WRF um, project within a reasonable budget and then funding the decommission, the current plant, uh, fund settlement with Cayucos. I don't know if that's exactly how we'd wanna highlight that. So please hop in if you have a different way you'd like to identify that one. Consider housing for people that wanna work here. And I think you're right. Um, Councilmember Barton, that will probably talk more about that in this next goal area as well. And then to explore EIFD in regard to the Vistra development. We did have a few identified as long-term, um, potential long-term action items to explore the offshore wind opportunity. I also put the broadband piece in this part as well that Councilmember Ford had brought up. Uh, to identify long-term infrastructure funding for streets and then the implementation of the One Water Project. Any corrections from the council members? And then it looks like Sarah Johnson-Rios has her hand up. Let's first see, are there any corrections from any of the council members on what's written here? Okay, Sarah, you had a comment or question? Thank you, uh, Mayor and Council Members. I just had a clarifying question on B. Um, the way I heard the Mayor describe it, I was wondering if uh, B was to include the OPEB unfunded liability in addition to the premium health care costs. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sarah, help me. How do I identify that OPEB? O-P-E-B. It's, it's an acronym, Other Post-Employment Benefits. Uh, I was going to go for that. That was my guess, but I uh -huh. wanted to get it right. Thank you. And the unfunded liability piece of that. Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate that. Thank you. 
Great. I have it on letter B. Excellent. Thank you for clarifying that, Sarah. Okay, so we'll move into the housing goal theme. Um, this one, as Councilmember Barton started to speak about in this last area, um, some of what I heard from um, some of the community input as well as the one-on-ones was concern around how do we ensure that the city of Morro Bay is uh, has housing available for people that want to live here, but as well as people that, that work in Morro Bay and may want to live here, um, but have to commute in to um, serve in the city in some way. Um, so that was some of what I heard, um, opportunities to be creative about how that can be done and other housing needs can be addressed. Those were some of the things that I heard. Um, certainly this has been a goal area you all have been had some focus on already. So I'd love to open it up and hear what you all would like to see as the focus at this point in time for Morro Bay. Who would like to start? All right, Council Member Heller. I will start. Uh, yes, as you know, this has uh, shown up <laughs> from just about everybody, affordable workforce housing. I don't think we can wait for developers to come in and do this because uh, it's not truly affordable when developers do it. But I think we should consider the option of the city becoming a landlord. We own a fair amount of property in the city. I think there's some opportunities here with recent legislation from Sacramento that will allow us to build fairly high dense units with perhaps reduced parking requirements. If we can uh, identify funding for this, we can own and operate housing for local employees long-term at cost or with a minimal profit. And I think we need to look at that very closely. We have the land, let's do something positive with it. Let's do what we need, which is affordable housing. It could be funding that we procure or it could be a uh, public-private partnership. But I think we should pursue that. To me, that's a short-term goal. Let's get after it. That's it. Great, thank you. Who would like to speak on this next? Council Member Addis. Well, I wanna compliment our uh, council because before about, gosh, 2019 or so, we didn't talk about housing at all. And it was considered somebody else's problem. Um, and then our last round of goals, we added affordable housing and we did vote for um, our portion of a potential project on a Tascadero Road, I believe it is. And so I think we've taken some baby steps, but I wanna agree with council member Heller around the urgency of this issue and want to mention SB 9 that Council Member Heller brought up uh, yesterday evening and that if Morro Bay is not going to have reasonable solutions to this issue, uh, the state has legislation that has been signed that are going to be imposed on Morro Bay one way or the other. And so we have to wrap our arms around this to, uh, to bring us into the future. The chamber has brought it up as housing being good for business, and I absolutely agree with that. What I would like to see if this was my absolute success, it would be mixed use projects around our downtown core, around our waterfront and possibly reuse of the Vistra property or even um, the old water, the old uh, sewer plant, wherever we can find those opportunities for mixed use that create both affordable housing for the very, very low income, but also accessible housing for what people are calling the missing middle. We have to have um, not just lowest wage workforce housing, but also middle wage income earners, first time home buyers, the next generation. We need a mix of projects, um, but I do wanna agree on the urgency of this situation. Thank you, Councilman Morales. Additional thoughts around the housing goal theme, what you'd like to see staff really focus attention on. This is obviously one of those that it's not a, a problem that only the city organization can solve. It requires more players. Um, so focus for the city staff on this area. 
Mayor Heading. Thank you. Um, there are a number of uh, expert organizations such as People's Self-Help Housing, et cetera, that really do a good job with regard to this. And um, I think um, we should um, explore the opportunity for partnerships. Uh, Council Member Heller talked about, um, you know, quote unquote, city owned and or city generated uh, projects, but um, um, these require special expertise. And so I would um, um, try to forge relationships or increase the relationships that would exist and potentially could exist in the future with organizations like that. Um, and then um, we have um, actually a list of opportunity properties for this type of development. And um, um, I guess I would just suggest that it be moved to the forefront and we really strategically evaluate the potential use. Um, one of the examples would be um, a property to the south of us close to our wastewater treatment facility, not any property that we own, but right next door, there are pro approximately 50 or so acres um, of potential development. And, and, and these are sites that, again, I think need to be explored. And um, potentially um, the city can offer incentives. Um, and that's the third thing that I wanted to bring up, uh, incentives for uh, projects that bring affordable housing to the community. So an evaluation of our incentive packages, uh, maybe potentially through impact fee reduction or other kinds of incentives that would assist in making these projects happen. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Heading. I think I have that captured. All right, any other comments around the housing goal theme? Council Member Ford. Uh, thank you. I, I just want to say that I'm in support um, of, you know, exploring these opportunities that have been mentioned before me. Um, and that, uh, you know, speaking with various department heads um, in our own within our own city and many of which you know expressed the fact that our staff members you know a lot of them can't afford to live here um, as well as you know as been discussed many of the people that work here cannot afford to live here so they're having to commute here it's just not um, it's just something that weighs on my mind and I I'm glad that we are you know, choosing to make this one of our, our continued focuses. Um, and I know working with our city planning department, I know that they're working really hard to implement um, some things that will help um, make this process go that much faster. Um, I know that it's, it's on their minds as well, and they're working hard. Our city staff is amazing. Um, so I have full confidence that um, if we continue to have this as one of our goals that we can, um, working with other organizations, I think that we can really um, make some uh, major improvements quickly as short-term goals. So um, yeah, I really just wanna show support. I don't really have any additional ideas necessarily. Thank you, Council Member Ford. Any other comments about the housing goal area? All right, I will share my screen then to show you what I've captured here. And please, if anybody wants to clarify either what I've written or any clarifying questions from staff, so under this area, uh, sorry, excuse me, oh, yes, this is Jeff. Is there some way you could enlarge that screen? What I'm seeing is pretty small font. Is it? Maybe you can. Here. Yeah, that would be helpful. Is that better? Oh, that's so much better. Thank you. Good, good, good. I'm sorry you've been suffering in silence there. Good. <laughs> okay. So um, A, we have, and these are very interconnected uh, clearly, but First is to work to address affordable workforce housing, consider the city becoming a landlord as the city owns a fair amount of property, to potentially own and operate housing with the land we have with funding we procure or through a public private partnership. I just highlighted some additional comments that were made about housing is good for business, looking at mixed use and or developing other properties. 
Um, the exploring opportunity for partnerships to address housing, one of the groups being people self-help housing as this requires expertise to do this kind of work. Uh, really to move to the forefront, a review of the list of properties for this type of development to explore what could be used for this purpose and to look to create incentives to bring affordable housing into Morro Bay. One of the examples given was an impact fee reduction. And then finally, um, I did highlight this council member Ford that you would that you had stated was to really to continue the work that the planning department is doing to expedite the process so the things that are in play that do support the other infrastructure of making this happen. Anything you feel that I missed or you'd want to clarify what I've captured? Okay. Uh, uh, just one, I'm sorry, just uh, Please. Um, some, just from our discussion last night, <clears throat> this is not necessarily a, a large goal issue, but we did talk about, um, you know, some of the new housing bills that um, the governor is signing um, and, and educating council with regard to those requirements and mandates. So um, I, I would just love to see, um, you know, council member education as policymakers, we need to understand it before we can set policy. So that would be very helpful on new new legislation recently passed, <clears throat> excuse me. That's great. I, I went ahead and added that as F, educate council in regards to state mandates slash new legislation. Does that capture it? Yes, indeed, thank you. Great, thank you. Okay, so the final goal area that um, I pulled out as there being quite a lot of alignment on is uh, climate action. And certainly once we cover as we have been um, with each of the goals, once we go through climate action in the same way, we'll open it up if there's other things you feel like have not been captured in one of these four that you'd like to add. Um, specific to climate action, I think there was some fantastic things written in the, or provided for, um, by the public um, in the report that was provided before this meeting and some things that were identified in um, the survey and whatnot. Certainly climate action is an area that, that many cities are taking a focus on and is obviously one of those areas that cannot be resolved solely by the city. Um, but what are potentially, what I heard both from that community input and in one-on-ones with each of you, what can, as a city, what can you do to begin to take steps to address climate action? And so this being something that you wanted to get on the radar and start taking steps in that direction, knowing this is not in the 14 months that these goals are intended to be covering, that's not going to resolve in 14 months, but that you start taking steps for this longer term. So I will open it up for um, whichever council member would like to start the conversation. Council member Addis. I'll go, but I want to, if somebody else wanted to go first and just didn't get there quick enough, I concede my, my position. Um, You're on the hot seat now. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> uh, so for me, climate action is also linked to preserving open space. And I want to echo what um, Mayor Heading said about parks, which I consider a type of open space and planning commission's recommendations around trees. The reason I bring this up is, um, and I, I did a tiny bit of research, according to the Institute for Local Government, forest parks and open space lands serve as carbon sinks that can store greenhouse gas emissions and would otherwise contribute that would otherwise contribute to climate change. Trees and plants within parklands and open spaces remove carbon pollution from the air we breathe. So for me, a piece of this is continuing the work on the um, Toro Creek Preserve. It's moving our tree plan forward. It is investing in our parks, uh, but it's also some longer term things like 
battery storage. As Diablo goes offline, California is going to have a huge deficit in terms of energy production and clean energy production. It's things like continuing work on our wind farm. And it's also, or the potential wind farm, it's not ours yet, uh, but it's a potential. And then it's participating with other cities in our county um, in updating our climate action plan. And I'll reiterate what Council Member Heller brought up last night, which was we'd love to have a, um, a review of the current climate action plan and then better understand what can happen uh, for the future. So it's that very nitty gritty work of what's in that plan and how will it be updated. Uh, Council Member Addis, before we move on, I just want to make sure I capture this correctly. Um, the Can you say more about what you meant in the battery storage piece? Yes, yeah, so I see battery storage as connected with climate action because it will allow us um, to pull energy that already exists from wind, from solar, and from other sources off the grid, store it for up to four hours, feed it back into the grid, um, and in doing so can reduce our reliance on carbon producing energy sources. Thank you. Thank you. That's perfect. Okay, Council Member Heller. Somewhere I got to tell you, I'm amazed at how you can type and listen and do all this. Well, that's an amazing skill. I'll be tired by the end of the I night. bet. I bet you will be. <laughs> Oh, gosh. I agree with Council Member uh, Addison's comments, and I'd like to hearken back to the mayor's comments about SB9 and, and uh, educating the council as to what the impacts of that legislation is. I would like to approach uh, climate change in the same way that we that staff come back and educate the council as best they can. There are a number of technical terms, which has taken me a long time to read and learn about, and I understand about half of them. And I think in order for us to make intelligent decisions, we need to have kind of a baseline of, of knowledge about it. So I see that as kind of a, a longer term uh, goal, but something that uh, we probably could uh, wedge in somewhere in the next 12 to 14 months. I have a very specific action in thinking about this. There is some legislation with respect to diverting organic waste from the landfill, which I'm heavily involved in. There is a county board which is supposed to be monitoring this program. I believe that the city of Morro Bay could show a leadership role and put together, using your uh, new partnership wheel, which I love, um, put together a group of volunteers, maybe community emergency response team, other people who are concerned about uh, landfills and uh, greenhouse gas emissions, to go door to door to see, in fact, if people understand this legislation, because it's really asking people in their kitchens to change their behaviors with what they will do with their food waste. And I think we can probably uh, get a lot done with the restaurants and the large uh, grocery stores with respect to this legislation. But the bottom line is, it's almost a door-to-door -door approach, I think, for it to be effective. And I think that's one thing we can do in the next 12 to 14 months to really make uh, this legislation meaningful. That is it. Thank you. I really appreciate, I just have to highlight this because I don't always hear this from councils. Um, what you just said, Council Member Heller, about educating council on the technical terms related to this and then also around, you know, looking for expertise. I really applaud that, that you all, um, we can't all be experts in everything and yet you're asked to sit there and make decisions about um, policy um, so I really appreciate acknowledging that you need to lean on um, other experts for that to happen. So thank you for that comment. Thank you. Mayor Heading. Yes, thank you. Um, concurrence with um, what has been stated. Thanks for that. I, I specifically want to underline what Councilmember Addis said. I do believe the lithium ion battery project and the potential offshore wind project, um, even though they're long term, belong under this category as well, maybe potentially others too, but I just want to echo that. Um, I want to just add also um, that we're conscious of the need for advocacy as a council for regional policies that um, specifically are being considered by the Air Pollution Control District uh, of the county and all counties and CARB, the uh, California 
uh, air uh, reduction board or air quality board, I should say, um, and that we are um, advocating for those policies that are coming down uh, and being promulgated through those um, organizations and that we're paying attention to it, like our involvement in uh, the Nepomo Dunes uh, wind uh, area reduction of particulate matter contamination, et cetera, um, and offshore um, um, riding and vehicle use, which will decrease emissions. Um, and I think just being cognizant and aware of what those agencies are involved in, what policies they're considering, and how they apply locally is um, important, and that we advocate for um, those items that will improve um, or redu reduce emissions, et cetera. I also think we need to evaluate our city policies with regard to like purchases and other things to make sure that we're, we're looking um, uh, at the environment with regard to vehicle purchase um, and emissions and other kinds of things. One example is, is recently, you know, um, some of the items associated with the wastewater treatment facility um, and the opportunities there. Um, that's just an example, but um, I just think we should take the opportunity to look locally at our policies that the city might be able to consider to um, um, assist with climate change. So thanks. Thank you, Mayor Heading. Other con oh, Council Member Ford. Thank you. Um, I want to go back, take it back to the the subject that um, Council Member Addis brought up about the tree banking system. Um, the uh, before I was on council, I was a planning commissioner, and um, the idea of tree banking came to us out of a um, out of a meeting that we had with um, arborists, various arborists um, from our area, that were concerned. You know, the concern is that we may not have the proper trees in the right areas, the right spaces that can thrive in the, where they are currently. You know, planted, and it's why we have an issue with you know some of our trees are stunted and all these things. Um, and so I think that it's important that um, with this theme of uh, climate action, that we, when we consider planting trees in our commercial areas and even private residences, I think it's great for our city, especially since our city is a tree city USA, that we um, we really do take into consideration the fact that we need to be pointing people in the right direction for the the right trees to put in the right zones in Morro Bay. And it's my understanding there's like five different zones like that in Morro Bay for climate. And so um, putting the correct trees in the right spaces is really important. So something like that for the city is a really short, like that's a really short term goal that we could implement. Um, that could be a, just a small step in the right direction when it comes to climate. So um, that's something I just kind of wanted to you know, add a little bit to there. Um, of course, you know, green energy, all those types of things are really important, but I think it's also important for us to, I know we voted on this um, in a past meeting, I think it was the 14th, my very first meeting, and um, we were talking about, you know, this writing on behalf of our, um, our city to, um, you know, state, federal levels, whatnot, on behalf of certain issues. And I think being cognizant of climate issues and things like that, staying um, staying aware of what's happening, keeping aware of what's happening on a federal level, but also being active in what's happening on a federal level and on a state level um, as a small city, I think is really important for us. So um, what does that look like? I don't know, but I just think that we can be active in that space. So that's, that's it. Thank you. Summer, I just wanted to add that um, Council Member Ford said it much better than I did, but that's what I was referring to when I said advocacy, um, both at the uh, local, regional, and national level. Um, I, I concur um, with that, and I, I just want to echo the importance of that and the impact that local jurisdictions can have uh, both regionally and federally, um, but if they say nothing, there's no impact. So thank you. Thank you. I'm actually going to move that up to connect those those comments together. I think that's great. Excellent. Thank you. 
Okay, other comments from the council related to climate action? Direction you'd like to provide to the city staff? I, I would like to agree with the list that's been generated, <clears throat> but perhaps add um, a, a few more things to it. Um, and one, uh, one in particular is we've, we've talked about the battery storage and wind. Um, solar is not mentioned here. And so I think that's, that's one that uh, perhaps should be on there. Um, and also uh, climate action includes uh, water conservation. So in which, you know, kind of ties into Jen's um, trees. Um, as she was explaining them, um, different different trees can get by on less water than other trees, and so um, that's that's an area. Um, otherwise, I think this is a, a good list. Thank you, Councilmember Barton. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen then on this one. And as we've been doing, please highlight if there's anything that. I've missed or you want to clarify uh, first we had the preserve open space and some of the items that were talked about here was invest in parks planning commission's recommendations on tree banking there's a bit more on that later uh, continue work on the Toro Creek preserve did I get that one right excellent uh, P -O -R -O. it's just one R uh -huh. okay thank you you're welcome uh, leverage battery storage, reduce reliance on carbon producing energy sources uh, to continue to work on the potential offshore wind farm, can uh, participate with other cities in the slow county uh, to update the climate action plan, re reviewing that current plan and understand what can be updated to educate council on the technical terms around climate action to help make informed decisions to divert organic waste from the landfill, that the, specifically that the city of Morro Bay could take the lead on this county effort and some of the door-to-door -door, uh, efforts with residents to actually change behaviors there. Uh, to be conscious of the council's ability to advocate on policymaking at the county level as through air, air pollution control district, the state and federal, and how those policies can be applied locally or will be applied locally to evaluate the internal city policies regarding purchases that are climate conscious, such as fleet purchases, educating the community on planting the right trees in the right places, looking for opportunities for solar, and then to support additional water conservation efforts. Council Member Addis, yes. I want to also tie this back to our other goals when it comes to infrastructure as well as housing. Um, when we talk about multi-use um, multi housing projects, it cuts down on commuting, which I think, as we all know, uh, helps the climate. But also when we talk about traffic circulation and the ease of getting in and out of the Embarcadero or getting to where people need to be, it cuts down on them idling. And one thing I don't know if I saw in there was um, an additional focus or more support for um, high capacity EV chargers for cars and making sure that, um, you know, doing work towards bringing more of those. We had talk at past council meetings around the fact that there's so few on the central coast and some people have brought up the idea that Morro Bay could be um, a tourism draw for ne people who need fast charging because we're about halfway between San Francisco and LA. Great, thank you. I did add in Councilmember Addis to, to a note to connect to other goals, reducing tra travel or commute with more housing in Morro Bay and to ease uh, the ease to get out of the Embarcadero or traffic circulation cuts down on emissions and then access to EV chargers for cars. Does that capture it? City Manager Collins. Yes, thank you, Summer. Um, really good discussion. Um, and I, I know you may have more questions after this, but I wanted to check in and see how we would want to prioritize that list. Um, they're all wonderful ideas. Um, many of them are in the 12 to 14 month range. And um, you see the department heads before you who would be, you know, with the ones to call, be called upon to execute. And there's this many people to do the job. So we just want to know how we want to prioritize 
that, that list and, you know, sort of the steps to do that. Thank you. That is exactly where I was going to just go. Um, actually, before we go there, and Councilmember Addis, did you have a comment about that? Well, I was just going to respond and say I'd like to hear from staff uh, on where many, you know, I think Councilmember Heller brought up understanding the climate action plan, but I don't know if the city manager is asking about every goal or just this goal in particular, but I'd like to hear from staff as this comes back about, you know, what's possible immediately, what's possible medium range, what needs to remain long term, and what is already in the works. Because it's my belief that many of the things that we brought up today are already part of those uh, many, many dozens of things staff is already working on. Yeah, it, it falls along a spectrum of, of nothing have being done and, and, and many things being done on on that. And that's a crop. My comment was specific to the or general to the whole conversation of those four goals and the buckets that um, have been created. I, I again, my my goal is to make sure we can execute. And if we, when I started here, we had 87 objectives. Um, council narrowed that down to about 30, and we've probably whittled that down to about you know 20. So, you know, in four, three or four years. So just, I want to make sure we're able to, to level set on, on reasonable expectations because I want council to be successful. So that's that's where that comment came from. But yeah, I, I agree, uh, Councilman Raddis, that some of these things are have already have progress being made and others are, are new, kind of new ideas. Councilmember Heller. Yes. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Collins. I think probably most of your staff members have left the building after seeing this list. <laughs> I've got to say, though, when I got this list showing what you have accomplished, I never cease to be amazed at how much you and your staff have gotten done for this city since you've been here. And uh, it's just an, it's an amazing. I mean, I'm just so impressed with it all. Um, I think that we are primed right now to really embrace this new partnership wheel frankly i think there are components of how we operate now that that are focused on the topic uh i think i think we can do even more with that i think we can lighten the load on your staff even more there are eager people on these advisory committees who want to take on more responsibility they call me and say why can't i do this why can't i do that so i think it might be good for the council to look at the policy for advisory committees and in general work with staff to figure out how far we can go with this new partnership wheel because we have a remarkable community with enormous volunteer energy and concern for the city and we put a lot of it to work i think there's more potential there so i don't want you to feel like it's all on you i understand you have to look at it in that way but maybe we can look at it in a different way this time right so before, uh, sorry about that yeah go ahead mayor heading well, i would just I, i'm i'm so used to controlling meetings. I'm sorry, I forgot to raise my hand. I apologize. <laughs> so, uh, but what I wanted to say is is um, just echo um, thanks for the comments, uh, um, Councilmember Addis and Heller. Um, you know, Scott, it'd be I think our expectation that um, just like we've done in past seasons, that your your people would take these and say, hey, this is long-term. We have this much capability and capacity. Um, we can probably do this fairly easily. This is gonna be a hard one that may require additional resources and, and just help us understand what I call organizational um, capacity and the ability to achieve the goals. And, and um, I trust you and your, your leadership staff um, and your staff in general to, um, you know, massage this, come back and and say, hey, this is just not doable, um, or, or these are the things that we think we can accomplish. And I trust your judgment with regard to that, and and we look forward to that. So that makes I would, sense. Um, I would definitely uh, recommend, and if um, City Manager Collins, this meets what you need to uh, support the execution with the staff. Um, sometimes what we do is at this point, what I would call a recess and we would, or Mayor Heading would call a recess and I would put these into a spreadsheet and give, give points for the council to allocate and prioritize. Um, 
In this situation, I'm happy to do that if we'd like to do that. In this situation, I would discourage that. And, and here's why. I think that the way that this council has articulated, and I tried to capture by having a verb at the beginning of each of these items, that many of the things that are listed here are consider, explore, educate. It's it's not directive in the sense that that there has to be a completion of. It's a it's an exploration of what are the right uh, elements and and how what's short term, what's long term, and so I think it could be a mistake if we were to prioritize this evening based upon this list. Um, you might end up just on that the math that happens. You might end up with the with not the best work of what the work actually should be, and frankly, it does not take into account the expertise of the staff weighing in on how these things could be done or done in conjunction with others. Um, so my recommendation as a facilitator would be that we would take this list, which by the way, I still want to open up for conversation. I know this is a lot, but if there's anything we missed, I know that's scary to think about, but I do want to make sure we get to that. Um, but once we do that, that it really is an opportunity for staff to take this back and to then finesse hey, within these areas, here's what we would like to recommend is the or the top priorities and what can be done in this 14 month time frame versus these are ones that we're going to take maybe this step towards it, but it's really going to come into the the next uh, 2023 year. How does that feel to the the group here? It feels good to me. I, I think that's a reasonable approach. <clears throat> I really do. Um, and I, if you're at the the point for additional comments, you know, I, I almost consider it. Um, um, a, a fifth area, but I, I'm not wanting to add a fifth area, but but I, I want to talk about organizational effectiveness and capacity. Um, and, and the reason I mentioned that is, is um, not generated by the immediate discussion, but I had this written down a long time ago with regard to, um, we're a small city. We have limited resources. Um, um, Councilmember Addis talked about our ability to pay appropriately and attract the right resources, human resources or human capital, which to me um, is much more important than capital like buildings and things like that. Um, and uh, I would... Um, I would just like Mr. Collins and his leadership to think about what the council might be able to do to um, assist with um, not improving because it's not adequate, but, but assisting you with the tools that you need so that you can execute um, you know, and again, I'm not trying to say all the goals that we've done, but, but Scott, I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to be honest with our, our, as always with our community, you guys work hard. You folks work really, really hard. And I, I am continuously amazed, um, with the quantity and quality of work that is produced by you and your staff from your staff reports to the information that we request and what comes back so that we can make good decisions. But I also know uh, that internally, um, at times, people can get stressed and stretched and work long hours. And um, I just um, want to somehow just raise the issue of um, not only leadership, but staff health and staff uh, support and making sure that you have everything you need in your toolkit to be effective. And I, I, I don't know if I'm being clear with my articulation of that, but um, I think a lot of times you guys just do it and you work hard and we never, we never know when, um, you know, you're, you're getting to the end of your rope, so to speak, because you guys don't show it. I mean, you really don't. You're so professional. We don't see it. But I know in one-on-one -on -one discussions, um, the time commitment and um, the um, the caring that we have with our people. And so, um, Scott, you just need to come back after you massage all this stuff and, and, and put it through your screen knowing that we understand that. And if there's some things that we need to do to assist in making sure that um, – you're healthy and our staff's members, leadership and staff are healthy, 
you need to let us know. I, I appreciate that. And I, I think um, it, it, it feels the same way. I mean, I know how hard it's been for, for the four of you now with Jen. Um, the last two years have been very challenging uh, with COVID and you guys have been champions of, of this, the community and, and city and staff as well. And, um, and the community has been too. I mean, they approved a tax measure so that, you know, we can continue to provide these services and also begin to pay our employees in a way that, it, you know, is competitive with our region. So I, I we definitely feel the, the support. So I appreciate that. And also appreciate the faith that you put in us to sort of take all these great ideas and, and sort of put them into the buckets and realize that, you know, we can't do them all at once. And I know you all know that. Um, so we don't want it. We don't want any offense taken if we sort of move things around as long as we're very clear about how how and when we can execute it. And I I do take to heart what Councilman Reller said about sort of, it's what we learned in grad school about networking. You know, network governance is, is how things get done, but it's easier said than done sometimes. It's, it's a leap of faith, but you know, a lot of times it, it pans out in the end and it's a better product. So something I definitely take to heart to help get these things done. Yeah, I will just send council member Heller door to door <laughs> to achieve the <laughs> <laughs> He can talk about organic waste and yeah, add it to his list. Well, I love <laughs> I'm sorry, Summer, I, I didn't want to steal um, your leadership. Go ahead, please. No, no, no. I appreciate that. And I didn't hear, Mayor Heading, I didn't hear you saying that that organizational effectiveness is necessarily an add of a bull theme really a, um, a reminder to staff to make sure that they raise the flag on what's needed to accomplish these. And I think the permission to highlight, these are all important elements, but that the reality is not all of these things can be done. And, and some of these things can't be done, even if it was the only goal, it couldn't be done in the next 14 months. So I think acknowledging that to say, these are um, areas of focus. I would say specifically in climate action at this point, if I look at that, we have kind of everything in the kitchen sink in there because it's that's common because this is new for your city to be putting that as a goal. And so I think putting some attention on some of the areas that are very tangible initial steps to execute on, like revisiting what does the current climate action plan say, um, where maybe that needs to be updated, um, educating the council about some of those key areas so that you all can make really good informed decisions um, and policy around those. I think those are going to be key initial steps to then determine what additional areas really can be priorities in the remaining months. Um, and I'm more than happy to help articulate some of that as I pass this on, Scott, to you and the, and the leadership team um, to maybe support how that gets um, initially prioritized based on the conversation this evening. And then you all, certainly I'm not an expert in all of these areas. So then certainly once you put that expertise on it, that that helps to prioritize it. Councilmember Ford, you had your hand up a few minutes ago. Is there something specific to that? Go ahead. Not specific to what we're talking about right now. I actually have an additional goal I would like to propose. And so I will wait until we're ready for that, especially after this conversation and we're already spread thin and here I am wanting to add something to the list. So whenever we're ready for that, just let me know. So let's actually launch into that. And I do want to just articulate that it is important that we have that conversation so that we make sure we have all the pieces on the table, right? To say, hey, these are really the gold, the gold focus areas because sometimes something might come up that actually takes a higher priority than what we've had um, articulated at this point. Um, so I would like to open it up. It, these With these four areas we've already talked to, about around public infrastructure, fiscal sustainability and economic vitality, housing, and then climate action, uh, with an undercurrent of making sure we do that, making sure we pay attention to our capacity to actually accomplish these goals. Anything anyone would like to um, have considered to be added to this. So council member Ford, why don't you kick us off? All right, thank you so much. I'm gonna lower my hand. Okay, um, I would like to propose that we add a fifth goal of diversity, equity, and inclusion in our city. Um, coined, you know, DEI. Um, and the reason I bring this up is because I, well, I feel as though 
this particular subject, this 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 area, um, can be included in other areas as well as climate action, economic vitality, all these things. I think and housing, all of these are a theme that can go under DEI. And the reason I bring up diversity, equity, and inclusion is I think that in our current day and time, I think that it is on a lot of people's minds. I think it's on a lot of cities' minds. Um, talking to other cities, it's actually a very common goal in other cities. Um, they've created task force task forces and things like that in order to address um, DEI. And, you know, we may be a small town. However, we are never, you know, we we are not excluded from um, having discrimination, you know, whether it be racial or, um, you know, religion, however the description may be, we are not exempt from that. And I think as a city, we need to be actively anti these things and whether that be in our workforce within our city and how we go about on our hiring processes and things of that sort. Um, and also the way that we approach our community. Um, for example, it's always, it's been on my mind that we don't have closed captioning, you know, on our, um, on our broadcast for our meetings, our public meetings. And so, you know, that would be part of inclusion as well. Um, and one more thing I want to add is things like Polco, you know, these types of um, surveys, I think are reflective of a certain, you know, particular part of our community versus the community as a whole. We have a very diverse community here in Morro Bay that may not have been included in this poll. And I think that, um, you know, there's things that we could do as a city to, um, as far as outreach to include uh, different parts of our community in these types of um, surveys and participation in our in our government. So um, overall, I just it's just it's weighing on my mind. It's it's what I do in my life. I'm an activist when it comes to human rights and um, these sorts of things, and so. You know, I, I I would feel like I didn't do my job if I didn't bring it up here as a city goal as well, because I think that um, we can definitely implement it in short term and also in long term um, ways. So I just wanted to put that out there. I don't know if anyone else wants to support that, but <laughs> Council Member Addis. Uh, I'm super glad that Council Member Ford um, brought this up because it's been on my mind, but I didn't think to bring it up in our one-on-ones as an actual goal, um, but it is something that is top of mind for me. And what's really interesting about this is that Sheriff, Sheriff Ian Parkinson uh, just put out a community report on systemic racism in Slow County. And so I want to be very clear as I talk about this, that this is not um, finger pointing at staff by any stretch of the imagination. But I do want to read just a couple sentences from Sheriff Ian Parkinson's report. Um, and before this report came out, the sheriff had said that systemic racism does not exist in Slow County. He then went through quite a bit of education and created a unity committee and this is what his own committee said during a discussion about social change a colleague shared it takes us all indeed to tackle the deeply embedded systemic racism in our institutions culture and social structures we all need to work together toward a common goal of equity this is both a blessing and a challenge the blessing is that the people in So County are decent and want to do the right thing. And my addition is the people of Morro Bay um, are decent and want to do the right thing. And indeed, there are many committed individuals and organizations which have continued to make slow, steady progress, um, yet the challenge remains. And so I just want to put that out there. It's from our own sheriff. And then remind our council that we unanimously 
voted to declare racism a public health crisis. Um, and I think what Council Member Ford might be bringing forward is it's now time for us to take action along with that unanimous declaration. And we have had residents come forward and say that they have experienced racism in our city. Uh, we've had community forums on this in the past. And so I wanna strongly support this. I don't have a lot of specific actions that staff can take other than to say other cities local to the Central Coast have created unity committees or DEI committees, have looked at implicit bias, but have also looked at how diversity, equity, and inclusion are reflected in policies, as Councilmember Ford said, around housing, around services, and what could we do to take small steps um, towards a more equitable Morro Bay. Thank you, Councilmember Addis. Councilmember Heller, you're next. Uh, yes. Um, let's see if I can lower my hand. It's a good idea to lower your hand before you start talking. Uh, <laughs> this is interesting. Uh, I feel like I, I can't support it until I am brought up to speed on what our current policies are with respect to hiring, what the state and federal laws are with respect to these issues. Uh, obviously, it's an important one. Frankly, I think dealing with COVID, that would, that's my favorite thing that doesn't seem to fit on the list. I think we have some work to do there uh, to try and increase the vaccination rate here in our city. Um, I don't see this as something that's urgent, that the, the DEI is something urgent needs to be done at this time, and considering the list that we've created, I'd rather see our time spent on increasing the number of people who are fully vaccinated against COVID. Um, Councilmember Heller, am I understanding correctly that are you suggesting that that a potential goal area that is added for the next 12 to 14 months is related to vaccination? Yeah, that's what I'm suggesting. And obviously, we can all come up with, with good things that are not on the list that we've created. I am concerned about what we put on the staff at this juncture. We have a lot of really important things that, that we've put on them. You know, Scott Collins' face is no longer on the screen. So that's symptomatic of uh, his response. No, just kidding. Uh, but I think I'm very concerned about COVID, and I don't think it's over. And I think that's more pressing. And I'm reluctant to put too much more on the on staff's plate, but I think COVID should be there as opposed to the DEI issue, so. And just so I make sure I capture this correctly, Council Member Heller, that the, that the, um, is it a specific action step around COVID vaccination yes. that the city is part of increasing those vaccination? Exactly, I, I would like the city to set a target for the city of Morro Bay to have X percentage of uh, vac fully, fully vaccinated uh, people in the city. Set a target, and again, I'm going door to door. Uh, some city actually paying people 100 bucks or something to get vaccinated. We could get 1,000 people vaccinated for, for uh, I don't know the math. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, so I think there are a lot of options here, and so we're, yeah, we're I'm very concerned. That, so I just want to clarify, we're getting into action steps, and I just want to avoid that from a council. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that, no, uh, Jeff, I, I do apologize, but um, um, moving into specific action steps will, will come. So sure. I think I think the broad goal, if I'm not incorrect, is um, increase the vaccination rate in Morro Bay. Yeah, yeah, it's a short it's a yeah. short term goal. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank okay. you for the clarification. I just want to make sure I was capturing what the what the goal theme is. So I appreciate the that. That's thank you. Thing. Councilmember Barton, did you have comments about either of these or an additional? Um, I wanted to thank uh, Jen and Don both for um, bringing this uh, subject up. It's it's one that needs to be addressed, and I, I think there's a way to do it in the um, existing um, um, sections of, of what we've talked about tonight. <clears throat> and, and as for the um, COVID, I think COVID is a DEI um, situation. It's um, the, the differences in different groups of um, people, uh, their vaccination rates is is amazing, and so um, it's I, it, it's clearly something that we need to be addressing. Um, so 
I would support it being a, a fifth area or that it be um, one that floats in all the other areas. Um, so I, I, I thank you both for bringing it up. Thank you, Councilmember Barton. Mayor Heading. I couldn't find my hand. <laughs> Man, it's hard to be on this side of the thing and not controlling the meeting, I'll tell you. Um, so uh, let me, um, uh, first of all, support the comments by Council Member Addis and Council Member Ford. I, I think um, from the perspective of, and this is just my viewpoint of um, where we live, um, our community, maybe even our county, um, it, it appears to be a lesser of an issue than more diverse, quote unquote, larger urban areas. But I don't believe that to be true. Um, I believe it to be just as prevalent, um, some of the issues that were specifically mentioned here um, as in other areas. As an example, the action that we took to declare racism as a public health issue and or crisis. And what I would offer up is uh, perhaps the bucket is public health and, and perhaps uh, under or community health, whatever you want to call it, but I like public health, perhaps diversity, equity, and inclusion um, is part and parcel of that and begins to get defined and maybe the shorter term issue might be a greater understanding, bless you, um, and um, a greater understanding um, and awareness of um, what these issues are and then we can further articulate them um, with regard to specific actions as we begin to understand it. So I'm just, I'm trying to think as, as council member um, Barton was talking about, I think it's a thread throughout just about everything, but I do believe public health would encompass it. And I also believe um, it would encompass what council member Heller was talking about, um, which is COVID-19 and or vaccination rates. I think that would fit there as well. Um, and so my suggestion to council is that we do sanction a quote unquote fifth bucket. Um, I don't know if you're calling them goal areas, summer or what, but we call it public health. And we start with diverse, diverse, diversity, equity and inclusion. Um, and then also um, um, look at COVID-19 related uh, community education issues to reduce the pandemic effects on our own local community, as such as what Council Member Heller was talking about, vaccin vaccination rates, et cetera. And that with diversity, equity, and inclusion, maybe the shorter term goal as we flush it out is, is getting education and understanding this so that as a council, we're, we're up to speed um, for something that I think is a conversation and should be is and or should be a conversation in every community. So that that would be my recommendation. I don't know how council feels about it, but I would support that. Thank you, Mayor Heading. Council Member Addis. I would support either public health or community health. Um, I just want to add that if we are going to focus on COVID vaccination, um, which I believe is incredibly important, I have a strong preference for addressing that through the lens of equity, as has the state of California, um, as data is published on the Slow County website. And I absolutely agree with Council Member Barton um, that COVID has uncovered multiple inequities within our communities, both around vaccination rates, but also around access to childcare and the number of women dropping out of the workforce. And I am not asking the city uh, to take that on. We do have wonderful child care in our city and I do not get a lot of requests for expanded child care but I do want to throw that out there as a piece of things um, and then I'll repeat it again if we're going to go down the increased vaccination road as a goal for our city we have to pay attention to the equity data around that and make sure we're targeting populations in a way that attends to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I'm gonna say specifically 
the data on the county website shows um, that there are much higher rates of COVID around in Hispanic communities uh -huh. than in white communities, even though white communities are a greater proportion of our local population. And so if we're gonna talk vaccination, we need to unwrap that. Thank you, Council Member Addis. Council Member Ford. Thank you. Um, I um, would like to echo what um, Council Member Addis just said. And also, I want to thank you, Mayor, heading for your suggestion as well. Um, and I think everything that has been said in this, um, after I brought up this particular subject, has been very insightful. And I agree with everything that has been said, including Council Member Heller's suggestion to really um, do better on our vaccination rate here locally. Um, I do believe that we equity is important. Um, I'm glad that council member Addis did bring that up as a specific way to word this goal, to have that word equity in there, because I do think that it is, it, it is the main focus that affects everything else, right? So I think that it's important to have that word in there. Um, and I'm really excited about the way that this, um, this DEI has like evolved into a plan that I really didn't have. I just had a concern that I came here with because it was weighing on my mind. And I know that I had mentioned it in our, our session prior to this um, summer. We had talked, I talked a little bit about how my, you know, concerns about um, getting voices heard from other parts of our community and, you know, whatnot. But, but anyway, um, I like what has been said and I like the direction that we're going with this goal. So um, yeah, I would support what council, council member Addis has just proposed. Thank you, council member Ford. Council member Heller. Yes, I, you know, I, I'm in favor of the community health moniker. I think there are a number of things we haven't talked about today that could fit in here, including homelessness and uh, services for people that are not being served and a number of other things. So I, I think that might be a good t uh, title for this particular goal uh, that could certainly capture my interest in increasing the vaccination of COVID as well as DEI issues and other social issues. Thank you. And, and by the way, I'm fine with public health. I mean, community health, it, it doesn't matter. They're both, to me, the same. So uh, my hands, I forgot to raise my hand. Sorry. There's my hand. It's okay. <laughs> Bad okay. habit. What are we going to do with you, Mayor? I'll tell, I'll tell you what. My demote me. <laughs> Move me out of the panel. <laughs> All right, Council Member Addis. I originally had sanitation. My original, before I uh, came to this meeting, I had community health, actually. Thank you for reminding me, um, Mayor Heading, that I had been thinking about community health, and under that, I had uh, put address the COVID crisis as well as sanitation. Um, so I like the idea very much, and I could see sanitation under either one of these. I think sanitation is absolutely a piece of community health as well. Great, thank you. Council Member Ford. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> um, I want to add really quick because uh, to my original intention as well is that when I brought up task for task force, I don't know why I can't say that word, but anyway, um, when I brought that up, um, I really want to put the emphasis on the fact that it is a um, it's not just our local government, but it's a community issue as well. And I believe that um, we can really learn from other organizations that are already doing this work. And they've put a lot of hours, a lot of money, a lot of research into these different categories that affect DEI. And I don't wanna bring this to the plate as saying, hey, city of Morro Bay, we need to do all the things and fix all the things, right? So I just want to clarify that this is not me expecting, you know, our city manager, Scott Collins, and all of our staff to like take on this major topic. However, I would love to see this um, be a focus and something that we could use to bring in the knowledge from our surrounding organizations and other cities within our own as well. So I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you for that. Mayor Heading. Uh, so I, you know, I, I'm not going to add a bunch of stuff to the list, but 
you know, under this community health um, item, you know, as I talked about last night, um, I think our, our county is oblivious to the impacts of uh, fentanyl and methamphetamine um, street uh, abuse and availability. And I am particularly concerned about our kids. And so, um, you know, um, I, I don't want to get a, a list of a thousand things, but but I'm just gonna gonna th throw that out as as an issue of concern. And for me, again, it's just educational, um, trying to raise awareness um, because it is becoming such a significant um, public health, community health issue, and it has diversity, equity, and inclusion issues as well. If you look at the stratified data, you will find exactly what you find with um, vaccination. And, and many other uh, public health, community health programs and our initiatives that um, there is disproportionate availability and or um, 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 availability and um, what I'm trying to say, um, access uh, for individuals um, that fall into these groups. So I'm going to stop there because the list, I could go on with a number of other things, but I just, um, you know, I want to say that that's more for awareness, not much for you, Scott, to do other than the fact that um, I think it's important for our kids. So thanks. Thank you. So I'm going to share, I've been taking notes on this potential um, goal area that, that it sounds like we have some alignment in adding. Um, labeled community health. And I think I hear, I appreciate the additional um, commentary to qualify kind of the, ex the extent of this goal because it can be massive. Um, so the, the labeling of it around community health and then it really starts with the first understanding what the issues are and how the city can tackle these. Um, having worked a lot with cities, but also counties, many of the things that have been cited, there are county programs, of course, that support um, these things happening. And so some of this may be an effort that the city partnering with those programs, I'm sure they already do, but continuing to partner with those programs in a meaningful way um, to support these things coming to life for the city of Morro Bay. But the um, first piece around this diversity, equity, and inclusion and I've listed here as sub-bullets some elements around what might be some of the steps that could be taken in the next 14 months. So engaging first in a conversation about what this means for Morro Bay, um, potentially as an option to really embed from an equity lens um, into the current goals. So looking at housing from an equity lens, right? So how that is added into the um, efforts potentially looking into the creation of a unity or a DEI task force or committee, um, looking at what's already been done elsewhere to pull from, um, looking at how city policies can consider DEI when it's being when those are being written. Related to this, uh, the increase in COVID vaccination rates, but doing that through the lens of equity being on the list. Uh, that part of community health can be the support for our unhoused population, the connection to sanitation was also highlighted, and then education or awareness around drugs as a public health issue. I put drugs as an overarching. Um, those being the highlights of this community health component. Are there, yes, Council Member Addis. I appreciate this and I support it, but a word of caution. Um, if we embed equity or community health into our other goals, I believe we risk doing nothing at the expense of trying to do everything within the broader goals. Um, and I especially think this because it's new to us. If we had been doing equity work for a long time, getting educated, had a task force, we were well down the road, I think we would be at a point where we could embed this into other pieces and we would have enough efficacy that we could still address it. Uh, because it's so new, 
I really deeply believe community health with equity as a piece of that is it's important for it to be its own goal and with COVID um, obviously is huge is important to be its um, its own focus and I could see as we get um, better at it that we then embed it into other things that we do but I just don't think we're quite ready to weave this into everything else. I, I agree. I, I support. Oh, I'm sorry. I had my hand up. Was I next? <laughs> you are next. And I just before you go, Mayor Heading, I um, Councilmember Addis, I added into the um, that piece on embed. I said embed into current goals long term, but need to first understand understand it. Does that help clarify it? Well, I I just I don't think we're ready to embed personally. I I just think we. We're, it's just too new for us. And if we try to embed it, we're going to lose. I, I, I think we're going to lose sight of it because it's so new that we'll tell ourselves we're doing it, but we aren't really actually doing it. Um, and it'll kind of get lost in the shuffle. So w maybe one day, like in the next goal cycle, if we make it a goal now, maybe in the next goal cycle, we'll be good enough to say, you know, we can embed this. But I don't think right now we have the efficacy for that. Okay. Thank yeah. you, Mayor well, Heading. The point I was going to make is that it's in my on. Yeah, uh, the point I was going to make is it's not our co current goal number four, which is uh, increased community engagement and, and communication. To me, that's no longer necessary as a goal. That has become embedded across the organization. Um, so uh, I'm saying that that the way we, I, I would remove the word embedded and, and have this as a fifth category, leave it as community health with the items that are under it and begin to focus in on that so we don't lose the importance of it. Thank you. It is deleted. All right, council member Ford. Thank you. Um, I just want to um, finish up that um, that thought that you were, you know, having um, Council Member Addis and also Mayor Heading. Um, I, in talking to other cities that went forward with this robust plan to, you know, with their DEI um, goal, they tried to do all the things and put a lot of money into projects that they felt were what the city needed without um, getting input from various organizations and from the, the community that they are in fact trying to help. And so they wasted a lot of time and money and effort um, by making these goals so broad and so big so quickly. And so I'm glad that we're bringing it back to an educational um, beginning and learning from, you know, from the grassroots up, right? Like this is like, you know, council member Addis has mentioned, it is a newer topic that cities are addressing. And I think getting to know your community, getting to know the needs of the community before we start acting um, is a really important thing to do. And so, you know, does that look like a task force that we form with various community members and, you know, religious leaders, um, and organizations that already are, you know, focused on these these types of issues, I think that that's a great start. And so um, I'm, I'm in favor of not including them in other goals at this point as well, um, but more just, you know, a separate goal where we can, we can start to learn how to do better. Great. Council member Heller. I'm confused. <laughs> What are we doing with this, with this goal? I don't so, understand. I think I've put on this um, page here, so let me try to attempt that the suggestion is that there is a fifth goal theme around community health. And a, a key anchor of that theme is around DE&I. And it really is is in these pieces here to first engage in a conversation around what this means and educate ourselves to understand what are even the needs of the community before creating an action plan or specific sub goals related to this or actions that the city is going to take that maybe a step after this first step maybe the step is a creation of a DEI task force to to 
further flesh that out. And from that, some sort of, depending on what is uncovered or, or learned, that then there's some sort of action plan created. So I think that's the part I'm extracting from the DEI piece. I think there's a, then secondly, the request to say what can be done through an equity lens around the COVID vaccination rates to increase those percentages um, amongst different populations. So that's another component within the community health goal. And then some of these other elements, which I don't know that these are immediate steps, is to say as part of community health, what is the additional support for unhoused population, the dynamics around the public health crisis around drugs? Am I doing a good job of explaining what I think I'm hearing people have said? I see head okay, nods. So, yes, I wasn't sure if the name of the goal was changing or not. I am concerned that it's so broad now that the COVID-19 issue, which I think is urgent, is going to get lost. If you take if you take a lot of time developing task force and doing all that stuff, but meanwhile we need to get people vaccinated. So I just don't want that to get lost under this broad umbrella. That's my only yeah. comment. I appreciate that. I I see this as similar to um, the work that need, would need to be done in this area is similar to what we have in some of these others, which is to say what are the initial steps. So you may have parallel tracks of tasks happening, just like in some of these, that it won't be linear necessarily, but there could be steps taken towards the COVID vaccination piece simultaneously that initial education is happening related to the DEI space. But they're all under community. No, I get that. I hope that's the way it plays out. Gotcha. Any other comments about the community health one and or additional, I hate to say, but a potential additional goal area? Um, Council Member Ford. Can we put an sorry? Can we put an emphasis on the vaccination portion of it? I mean, I know we didn't want to necessarily categorize like step one, step two, you know, highest goal in that category. But um, I understand um, where Council Member Heller is coming from because it is an immediate need at this, you know, right now. I mean, we're in the, still in the middle of a pandemic, so um, I, I mean, I'm. I'm fine, you know, as a second person to, um, you know, still continue with the all the things that you wrote down for the DEI um, category, but also putting, you know, the vaccination rate and getting the education out as one of the top immediate priorities. Because I, I see where you're, what you're saying, Councilman Member Heller, I don't want to lose sight of that as well. So I think this is a is a bit of that prioritization activity that we're doing. So I put up top here immediate need around vaccination rates, but under the same umbrella continues to be DEI and some of the others. Okay. Are there any other elements that we need to identify as being key themes that we didn't capture this evening? <laughs> Okay. Um, so I think that the, as far as next steps, and then I will turn it over to City Manager Collins um, and or the mayor, that the next steps from this, I will take these uh, notes that we've just walked through, clean them up a bit, um, work to make sure that I've, I think, well articulated, although it sounds people have been checking that as we've been going. Um, make sure that that is well articulated. And then the ask is for city staff to um, take this list and um, permission from the council to really tease it out to what is realistic that can be done immediately in the next 12 to 14 months and what is maybe further um, in a, of an extension. I, I really, a big part of why I wanted to position that partnership wheel at the beginning is because many of the cities and counties that I'm working with right now, their lists start very similar. And the reality is the kinds of issues that we are dealing with in communities right now, the city organization cannot fix. Um, 
they can't fix alone, certainly. And um, in a in large cities that I work with, they may have very similar lists. The, the nuance within them may be slightly differently, but they have you know, 100 times the size plus of the staff that you have in Morro Bay. And so it, this will be a hard job to prioritize this and distill this down. So I know the staff is quite capable of doing that and I will be there to support them in doing that um, as needed. But the key will be that when they come back in that October timeframe to share this out with you, that we set really real, we're realistic about what can be accomplished in this 12 to 14th 14 month time frame and what can be is an ongoing element of this goal area that would go into the next goal cycle as well. Councilmember Addis. I just want to um, briefly say that we can all be vaccine champions right now. We don't have to wait for this city goal to be implemented. And so I was just Googling that, um, although I was riveted by what you were saying, Summer. So, um, but I did just Google, what can we do? And you know, what the county has a vaccine champion uh, toolkit. And each council member who has social media right now today after the meeting could start posting, could use a Facebook frame, could start sharing information with our communities. So I just want to urge each of us to take action um, as soon as we get off this meeting and not wait for it to be a city initiative or a city goal. Thank you, Councilmember Addis. And I just added as a note on that immediate need, that's an example of something that could be done um, immediately as a potential action item. Thank you. I'm going to turn it over to City Manager Collins if you had any comments to make, and if not, then over to Mayor Heading. I, I think to send it to the mayor, but thank you. All right, thank you. I think uh, returning it to the city manager is appropriate. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Summer, you didn't use the term. I think you need the coin for your business. And at the end, you're going to summarize, S-O-M-M-E-R-I-Z-E, -E, which I think <laughs> is appropriate for you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I just want to say thanks for, um, um, one, a very um, robust conversation. Um, it's great to, to engage in this. Um, um, sometimes different viewpoints, different priorities, but that's what councils do. They express their, their passions, their priorities, and what they understand to be the, the community's desires and needs. And we articulate that. And, and, um, and, and Summer, you did a great job of, uh, in real time, I think Council Member Heller said it, capturing this stuff for us and, and getting it down. And, and that's just so helpful to see it. For me, I'm a visual, so seeing it there displayed before me was very helpful. Um, you know, I, I really talked about organizational effectiveness and capacity on purpose because we face this um, every time that I've done goals with the city for the last few years or well for the last seven years um, and um, I am confident in Mr. Collins and his staff that they'll come back telling us what's doable and what's not doable. The other thing is that we often have council subcommittees. I, I must tell you this is an active council that doesn't get in the middle of operations but when sanctioned by the council um, we do get involved in a lot of day-to-day -day operational things and oversight and so that's something else I, I just want us to consider as we look at some of these initiatives that I don't want to create a hundred you know different uh, council subcommittees but we're an active council and um, council member Heller is going door to door I think that's cool and um, you know um, I'm serious about the subcommittee issue it, it really is it's very functional helpful and i know staff appreciates the assistance um, in a number of different areas so keep that in mind as we go forward a lot of times when you have a passion you are on a subcommittee as a result of that so thank you again everybody for your participation this evening thank you to our community there'll be another opportunity as we come back with the summarized list um, and input from staff and uh, we'll have more public comment and um, um, a chance again to to look at these goals and priorities good work um, folks thank you staff again as always for all that you do summer excellent facilitation appreciate your leadership in 
getting us through this. We're not through with you yet. We're going to, um, I know, continue to use this to help us move these forward. And um, um, if I miss thanking anybody, thank you, AGP. Thank you. Always in the background, doing a great job. We appreciate you very much. Um, and so with that, I'll go ahead and adjourn our meeting. The next meeting of the Morro Bay City Council will be on October the 12th. That's Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. via Zoom. Have a great evening. Everybody be safe and be well. Thank, Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Summer. Night, everyone.